What's up guys, Hume Carjack here and welcome back to the channel. Now judging by the title of the video, you guys already know what's happening. We're going to be vinyl wrapping the front grille. So there are a couple of different screws that we have to take off and a bunch of different pop clips. Uh, so as far as the tools you'll need, I think you need a 8mm socket, a pop clip tool, and I believe a Phillips head screwdriver. And then later on I'm going to go ahead and use a heat gun. And I'll show you the rest of the pieces of equipment that we're going to be using. So as for the tools that I mentioned before, this is a set of pop clip tools or, or molding and removal sets. Um, so you can get these on Amazon or eBay, anywhere really. They're made of plastic, so they're not going to damage any of your existing pieces or components. So we've got our Phillips head screwdriver and a socket set that I'm pretty sure it's 8 millimeters for a couple of the, uh, the nuts here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys on the side there for now, just so I'm not blocking anything. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this. So here are our... Uh, locations. So we have a pop clip right over here, 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 here. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, there's actually a, a guideline on how to remove your front grill on the Forrester forums. So I might leave that in the description if you guys are interested. So go ahead and check that out. You can get the full details on how to remove the grill. So just to show you guys how simple it is, we're going to be focusing on this pop click right over here. I kind of popped out the rest of them so far, but look, we just take the edge of this tool, put it right in here, one-handed, right over here, and then just flick it up, and that's it, and it comes out all the way. So the pop clips that you have to remove are one, two, three, four, and then these two rubber ones on the side. So we're going to go ahead and get started with those first. All right, so now that we have all the plastic rivets off the pop clips uh, the tool that we actually use I thought it was supposed to be a Phillips head screwdriver but it's one of these it's one of these like kind of star pattern uh, screwdrivers I don't know what size this is I just actually found it laying around in my basement so I'm gonna see if this size fits and it does yeah so we should be good to go so just to show you guys where the screw is it's actually right in here I'm gonna try and get this thing to focus hopefully it's bright enough it's right in there well, anyways, you get the idea. It's right there. It's, 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 the camera doesn't seem to want to focus. So it looks like I'm going to have to remove these pop clips as well because there should be a couple of other screws that are in here on this side, but I can't see them. And I think if I take off this inner part of the grill as well, uh, it'll give you a little bit more clearance so I can access those screws and kind of see what's going on down there. So I've popped them out already, so we're just going to go ahead and actually remove them. Alright, well there it is, got that out, it wasn't too bad actually. So we got the lower grill out, um, yeah there are a bunch of little plastic pieces over here if I want to completely remove the trim, uh, which I probably will do uh, just to be able to clean it up a little bit better and separate it from the rest of this housing. So we're going to go ahead and work on the upper part of the grill now. Next step we're going to go ahead and take our sockets and I'm going to remove these top Little nuts. Alright, to remove the upper part of the grill, the biggest pain in the butt really was this plastic tab. So once you take off all the screws, this plastic tab, I was trying to get it off with the pop clip tool with the pop clip tool, but you could actually just pop it out. Just like don't be afraid to give it a little bit of force. It doesn't break off. I mean at least mine didn't, so uh, yeah, not too bad. There it is. So we popped out this whole thing. Looking pretty good. I think one of these little pop clips, this thing did break off, just one of them, but I think we should be okay. I actually don't even know where this goes. We have one, two, three, four on this side, one, two, three, four on that side. I guess this was right in the middle somewhere. Oh yeah, I think it was right over there. All right, that broke off pretty cleanly. Um, <laughs> oh well. But yeah, so this is what it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this inside now. We're gonna clean it up. And we're going to go ahead and take the other piece over here, remove it from the, uh, the big part of the grill, and then we can get to wrapping. All right, guys, so we are inside now. We have our grill piece, and over here we have a bunch of different little plastic tabs. So that's going to help us to remove the, uh, the silver trim piece that we want to vinyl wrap. So I think you could even do it by hand. I'm just going to try and push these out. So I'm going to do like two at a time like this. 
So the first one's out. Second one. Yeah, you guys get the idea. So I'm gonna be working on this, pop these out, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. All right, so that whole process wasn't too bad. What we have to do now is clean off some of these edges from some of the uh, plastic dip that I had put previously. Uh, actually, no, th this is like tape or something that comes from the manufacturer, so we're gonna leave those alone. But there are some pieces that there are like plastic dip on it. So we're gonna go ahead and take some rubbing alcohol and water Go ahead and give this a nice light scrub down so we don't see any more uh, fingerprints or dirt or anything like that. Make sure that it's completely bacteria and dirt free. And then we can actually start the vinyl wrapping process. cleaned off we're gonna let it dry just for a second and I want to go ahead and show you guys what kind of vinyl wrapping that we actually picked up so this is the vinyl it's by vivid um, vivid is also on eBay uh, but I decided to order directly from their website because there does seem to be a lot of knockoffs of this brand on eBay um, so I hear pretty good things about it it's not 3m so I don't think it's as thick as 3m but I hear that it's a little bit more moldable and you don't have to apply as much heat so we'll see how long this thing really lasts and how well it holds up against the elements once we do get it on these pieces. Oh, look at this. So we opted for the gloss black color. All right, yeah, so what I hear about this stuff is that if it has a white backing paper over here, it means that it's the real deal. If it's clear or any other color, uh, it's a fake, it's an imitation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and roll some of this out, create a little bit more space here on the table and then place the components or the pieces that we want to wrap on top of it just to kind of gauge how much we want to cut. I actually didn't mention that. So this is my first time actually vinyl wrapping, so this might be a disaster, but we'll see exactly how it comes out. We're gonna leave about that much. So what is this? This is about two feet, and that might be a little too much. Let's go a little bit less. Let's cut about maybe this much. All right, we'll figure it out. Let's give this a shot. So we're just kind of eyeballing it here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this much and we'll take a measurement of exactly how much it is uh, once we're done cutting. So on one end we have about 14 inches and on the other, I think it's gonna be much bigger, we have about 17. Yeah, so <laughs> wasn't the straightest cut. So our two tools we're gonna be mainly using are gonna be a heat gun and we also have a felt squeegee, right? So it's very important that it's felt so it doesn't scratch the vinyl, it's really soft. And this heat gun you get at Harbor Freight for like $8, so it's not bad. Now you guys might be laughing at the way I'm doing this because this seems <laughs> really wrong. Um, but you know, it is what it is, it's my first time, so we're learning here. All right, so we've completely covered our piece. Right, a little bit of it is sticking to the table, that's okay. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of heat and then start to fold it over the, uh, the piece. But first, what I think is the right way to do it is really get it flattened out onto our piece. So we're gonna try and trace the outline of it, try to straighten it out as much as we can. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use our heat gun. We're gonna put it on a low setting first and uh, just see how well it molds to the, uh, to the actual trim piece. So from what I've seen, you don't need too much heat in order to kind of wrap it up. So we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing here. We want to pull it over, over the edges like this, give it a better outline. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of trim these pieces a little bit using my scissor. So, or at least we're right over there. So let's go ahead and cut this up. We're probably gonna have to keep cutting a whole bunch of this stuff. Um, so we're just gonna throw this on the side. You're gonna keep cutting. So let me go ahead and check in with you guys in a little bit once I kind of clean this up a little bit and have a little bit more molded onto the trim piece itself. All right, it's been going pretty good so far. I trimmed off a lot of the excess stuff. Um, there was also a lot of like little pieces of glue that I guess Subaru puts on just to hold on to the uh, the rest of the car a little bit better and I didn't take off, but I'm actually able to wrap over it, which isn't too bad. I just gotta apply a little bit more heat 
and it kind of just forms right over it. Uh, not too many bumps or anything. Like it's looking like that side I did already. It's looking pretty smooth. So I'm just making my way from there all the way over. So we're almost done here with this piece. And I'll show you guys the final product in a second. All right guys, but here is our bottom trim piece. It's looking really nice. I managed to get pretty much all of the air bubbles out. Uh, the vinyl wrap didn't scratch or anything, um, so we're going to clean it off after we put it back on the car. So I'm leaving a bit of excess over here on the sides, like just a little bit hanging off, so that when we actually put it on the car, we're going to go ahead and use our razor blade over here and cut off all the excess. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out so far, so let's go ahead and move on to the other piece that's right over there. Now I feel like this piece might be a little bit easier to wrap now that I know that I shouldn't use too much of the the wrap itself because um, I had to cut off a lot of excess so here's all the excess from the last one so this is a this is a good chunk like this could have been used towards something else um, but yeah so th I mean honestly yeah this could have been like a whole mirror cap but I mean it is what it is we're gonna put this to the side now and we're gonna go ahead and focus on this piece say if I put this right there yeah I'm gonna cut about this much because before I think I cut about double of this so we're gonna cut about what is this like six to eight inches uh, all together. Maybe a little bit more since this side's a little bit taller. Yeah, I think this should be enough. This looks pretty good. Alright, I think that's a good start right there. So we can go ahead and start to stretch it over. Kind of get the whole molding of the piece out. Here we are. So we're gonna go ahead and start to kind of wrap around it, even though it's not straight, but you know, once we start applying the heat, we can kind of mold it a little bit better. And yeah, even this piece that I thought like was gonna be um, just like a good amount, um, this is like definitely too much. So we're definitely gonna have to trim on this as well. Right, so we cut off a whole bunch of the excess material and now we're going to go ahead and try to mold it around a little bit more. So it's constantly that, that process. You mold it, you heat it up, you squeegee it, mold it, heat it up, squeegee it. Like you kind of just keep molding it as best as you can. Get all the bubbles out, get it nice and flat. That's really, that's really what it is. It's, you know, it's tedious, but in the end it's pretty cool. So this is the one end that we're still working on. We managed to complete the rest of the piece. Um, honestly, I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, I trimmed off a lot of the trim pieces. Um, we're gonna leave it the same way that we did the other piece where like some of these are just kind of hanging off. And then when we actually put it on the car, we're gonna really tidy it up and clean everything up. Trim off all the excess pieces and we should be good to go. All right, so we've got our final products here. Everything came out pretty good. Uh, some of the edges like I think over here, I can't remember actually where it was, but I do have a lot of rock chips on the actual trim pieces. I think that was, it had to be from the uh, the thousand mile journey to uh, to Vermont for the Champlain Classic. So, you know, other than that, I think it came out pretty good. I mean, some of the edge pieces, like we said, they're a little bit rough, but once you put it on the car, we can go ahead and trim it up. But look at this thing, it, looked, it came out pretty damn good. I mean, for my first job too, uh, like I'm... I'm pretty happy with this, so we'll see, we'll see how it looks on the car.